Sounds are coming to you from your favorite neighborhood, Milk Estates, where we were gone last week on spring break, but we're back. And we're also going to do a live in a few weeks on the 21st. So stay tuned for details about that. Um, you can listen to our podcast at, um, not that bad. you can listen to our podcast at Apple or Spotify <laughs> <laughs> or go to irrationalmoms.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. Or you can go to um, Instagram or Reddit or Twitter too. And you can leave us a comment and kind of watch some of our shorts. So yes, we love having some fan questions. So, okay. We have a lot coming up, <laughs> a lot to digest because we've been gone. So we have a fan question from our YouTube fan. Uh, we have an irrational topic about like, oh my God, everything, the sun. And I even brought my cool glasses. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and we also got to talk about the buzz surrounding NCAA women's basketball. But before we get talking about that, we want to talk about Annabelle's spring break and then how it started off where she was sending us all these text messages because she, I will let you talk about it. It was, it was crazy, crazy. <laughs> well, so it's funny because my ex-husband is notorious for being late to everything and like hours late, missing flights. Like it's really bizarre. Like the first time I ever was going with him, we were in grad school to meet his parents. It was a Friday night after school and we missed our flight. And I was like, who does this? You know, I was like, <laughs> my mid twenties and really poor. I was in grad school and I'd paid for my ticket. I was like, who misses flights? But it was like no big deal to him. Should have known. Um, so then this was a thing that went on over the, over years and years and years. Well, so anyway, but his mom understands how irrational that is. And so back when we were still married, if we, his mom, we would visit them. His mom would take me to the airport and he was responsible for getting himself to the airport because he would always be late. And so about 50% of the time he would miss the flights, but I would be able to get home. So on this particular day, we're traveling on Easter morning, first flight out of the day. And we missed our flight because my mother-in-law somehow didn't understand that we were on an international flight. And so we missed the baggage cutoff by three minutes. Um, she just kind of thought we would breeze through because my father-in-law goes in a wheelchair um, through the airport. So she's like, oh, breeze through. I'm like, but we still have to check our bags. And she's like, oh, well, I said, you know, it's an international flight. She's like, yeah, it'll be fine because the first leg is international. We had a layover and I'm like, what? So anyway, we missed, we missed the cutoff. Um, then we have to rebook the flights. There's no flights available from anywhere. And the only flight available is a United flight. And they're because they're the worst airline is why I think they had seats. And so we booked that and it's, it's leaving many hours later. And we were meeting a bunch of our family. So we didn't want to miss a whole day. So we were meeting our family and I rebooked the tickets and we finally get on the plane. It's delayed. It's delayed. We sat on the tarmac for two hours with no air and no beverage service. Wait, how long did you stay? How long was it? um, Was your wait from like your original flight to your new rebook? Original flight was 6 15 AM. So at five 30 is when I was like rebooking AM. And then our next flight was at our flight was at 2 PM. (laughs) So we had that many hours in the airport. And it was like too much of a hassle to leave and go home, even though I wanted to. Um, I couldn't really do it because they were paying for the vacation. It'd be really rude if I'm like, I'm going home. (laughs) (laughs) So we wait around, we get on this 2 p.m. flight and it sits on the tarmac for two hours. Um, You know, there's some sort of delays. And then finally it goes and we just assume we're missing our connection because it was so tight. Well, we land and we realize we get close to landing. We realize, oh, my God, that flight was so delayed, too, that it's actually we can still get on it. So we have to run from a flight, to one flight to another. We get there dripping with sweat. With your father-in-law in a wheelchair. Father, yeah. He he got there fast. He, went, he was fine. He got pushed in a wheelchair. The rest of us had to run. And so, and we were, of course, in really terrible seats on this rebook flight, right? So then we get on this plane and then we sit for another two hours on the tarmac without taking off. So we f- arrived at our final destination at like 1 a.m. And this was after getting up at 3.30 a.m for a flight that we missed and my mother-in-law's famous last words on the way to the airport were when i was saying i was nervous about the time because they were also late in addition to just not being prepared to go you know at a correct time they were late from the time they told us and we only missed it by three minutes so she was like well what did you want to get up earlier and i was like well, I'd rather get up at 3 a.m. and miss the f- and make the flight than 3.30 a.m. and spend 24 hours traveling to my destination. 
So it was God, the worst travel they have ever had. And I'm not even going to talk about all the nonsense and the drama and like parents who don't control their kids on airplanes and let them kick the back of seats, for example. Mm. Did you turn around and just be like, stop? I did because this kid was like six years old. This kid was old enough to, it wasn't <laughs> yeah. like it was a baby or a toddler. And this kid kicked the sh- kicked my seat and I told the mom, told the mom. And finally I turned around and yelled at the kid. I'm like, stop kicking my seat. And he's like, Good. And then his, at that point, his mom grabs his legs and tells him to stop. But then she completely doesn't pay attention. He he does this often on the whole flight. And then we land, and I actually see how big this kid is. And he's way too big to behave like that and not get in trouble. He was running around in the baggage claim, harassing everyone. He was climbing on people's stuff, climbing people's legs, strangers. And I'm like, that is a terrible parent. Irrational parent, sure. you're not trying to control your kid. Now, I know we cannot control everything our kids do, right? But you got to try. You have to look like you're trying, especially in an enclosed space <laughs> in public. You have to look like you're trying to parent your child. You can't help it if they start screaming, but you got to try to do something. I mean, well, that's like sit, letting that's... a kid run around in a restaurant like while yes, you're trying to eat. Exactly. And they're like at your table. Like you mm-hmm. just, your child doesn't need to touch other people. Exactly. Like I'm not one of those that's militant it. people where like kids shouldn't travel, babies shouldn't travel. No, that's not how I feel. But like, you as a parent it is your responsibility you cannot have someone who paid two thousand dollars for a freaking flight getting kicked by your old enough kid to know better oh, I, I mean would my kid that. would be getting yep. beat on the airplane yep. i'm sorry but you're getting a spanking yeah, i think the the parents. part that's tough for me is the three minute miss like if it was half an hour i'd be like ah okay half an oh, hour oh i know but like it was three minutes <laughs> <laughs> but where do you cut off? Because you want to be like, it's just three right. minutes. But like, at what point? Well, and it was sort of made worse because there was an error in the United system with my birth date. Now we entered it correctly. I entered all my passport information. You know, they scan your passport. So we had to go to the full service counter because of this error. And so if we hadn't had to do that either, or she hadn't taken so long mm-hmm. fixing it, we would have still made the cutoff. So there was a whole lot yeah. of forces conspiring against us i felt well like can't you just override it and she was absolutely would not so oh i feel like thanks for missing <sighs> making me miss my flight <laughs> yeah but my mother-in-law i mean to be fair she was upset and she knew it was her fault she was like really apologetic so i didn't give her a hard time even though i was wanted to scream because i mean that would just be mean <laughs> of me and she knew it she knew it's not like you need to tell her hey you sucked right there <laughs> um she's a wonderful lady so i don't want to like say anything bad about her Um, So lesson learned. I'm sure she's not going to be late again. She's never going to be late again. So when we were flying back from LA uh, back home, Sacramento, the flight for the, it was like a Southwest flight, right? Cause it's like really easy to fly. Like it's an hour. So get on LAX and it's like late at night, like 10 o'clock because our flight got delayed, like pushed out two hours. Uh Uh-huh. So we get on the plane and it's like really light. So I'm like, hey, can we, is this like a full flight? And she's like, no, no, go ahead and spread out. And I'm like, yay, we can have like, we can, we don't have right. to put someone in between us because those little, the seats are little on Southwest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so right, so we're up front, Um, right next to me is like this little boy and his grandma, right? And then the seat next to the window is like, em- is empty. Mm-hmm. So every, she, the flight attendant is telling everybody like, go in the back, go in the back because we have to, right. there's not enough people. The flight's not full. We have to like make sure that the airplane's distributed. Right. They need people the to weight, spread right? out. Right. So we need you to spread out. This lady gets on, swear to God, tweaker. And she's like, <laughs> she tries to sit next to the old the old lady. And the flight attendant's like, I need you to go in the back. She's like, no, I'm claustrophobic. I need to sit up front. And I'm like, if you're claustrophobic, why do you want to put yourself like right next to this old lady and right. her grandson? And I'm like, you're just being Suspect. a pain in the ass. Yeah. She and just I'm, wanted that bulkhead leg room. Oh my God. <laughs> But when oh. the flight's empty, you have plenty of room right? to spread out anyway. Exactly. And then on top of it, she was like such a bitch. Like when we got off the plane. So, you know, like everyone gets off, you let everybody in front of you go. No, yep. that bitch got up, cut the grandma off. Or I actually went and got the grandmother's like cane because they had to put it up above for yeah. her. And she didn't speak really good English. So I'm like, hey, I got it. I'll go get your cane. Yeah. So the lady, that same lady, like. And I, she could tell I was like pissed because I'm looking at her like, are you, are you effing kidding me? Like she's cutting the old lady yep. off and cutting people off in front of us. Cause she's like, oh, I have to go. And I'm like, right. we all have to go. Right. I'm like, mm-hmm. and she's like, well, I gotta, you know, I gotta make the, the car rental place by midnight. And I'm like, okay. But I'm like, you still gotta get your luggage. And it's like, it's right. still going to take some time. But I'm like, and I'm like, other so people rude. have to go places too. And that yeah, you're not me. the only one. So on our flight, the the first flight where we thought we were missing our connection and then we didn't, 
So they announced multiple times. They were like, if you have 30 minutes or less to make your connection, raise your hand. So about like a third of the plane raises their hand. And they're like, please, if you are not raising your hand, stay in your seat. They said it multiple times. They were talking to people. people still get up. Do you think? And so we were not all together because we had rebooked, right? So um, the in-laws were towards the front. My daughter and I were like kind of in the middle. My son was in the back. And so I'm like texting him. I'm like, hey, tell everyone around you, you need to go. Push your way around them. If these people, whatever, you know, get to the front. So when we got off, the in-laws had already started going, which is why I, and I waited for my son because we had to run there basically. And I swear to God, now some people in the beginning were waiting, but at the back of the plane, those assholes were absolutely not because you could tell they weren't in a hurry because they slowly got off. They're milling around, talking, meandering, just taking up the jetway. And I was so mad. I was in full like George Costanza mode. Like, you know, we're living in a society. Like, <laughs> like nobody is happy to be in this position, but literally these people are trying to not have to spend the night in another city to yeah. get to their destination. And you can't wait five minutes. No, people are rude when it comes up. Or, horrible. Uh, flying. It's just horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. Where I'm like, come on, man. I'm like, this is an old lady right here. I'm like, and you're pushing. Oh, and you weren't even said, excuse me. You're like, you just pushed her way around her. And the seats right. are little in Southwest, right? And I'm like, um, what the F is your problem that you have to like, you're in such a hurry that you can't let this old lady go right. in front of you, you know? And the seats on Southwest are, or I'm sorry, on United are awful too. And I happened to get on one of the flights we rebooked. They were like, oh, this is great. You're getting a middle seat but there's no window because it's um the road below the exit row and there's a jump seat for flight attendant seems great it is this much more narrow than the regular seat i have a big butt the lady next to me (laughs) had a big butt so our butts were basically squished together under the armrest and i kept trying to move over but when i did i was on like an incline because the seat wasn't flat right there it was terrible i'm like you know these airline i mean everyone talks about this but y'all really make so much money and y'all really treat passengers like absolute crap because there's no reason i can't even walk down the aisles anymore of the back of planes because my butt is too big now granted my butt has gotten bigger but like the seats are so (laughs) narrow my hips cannot just walk through them and that has not always been the case yeah, no, they've gotten smaller and they've been complaining about that because Southwest actually is making their their seats a little smaller too, yeah. right? So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, I, Tris is over there. I can see she's antsy because she's probably like starving uh, hungry. Are you starving hungry? You know what? I've been, I've been eating little pieces of my snack, so it's all good. You guys just all right, talk, so you guys talk away. We, let's, let's see what they, snack you have you brought for us What's today? the snack of the week? I, the snack of the week, I was craving bagel and cream cheese, but I did make it pretty. I put strawberries oh. on it. See? Oh, Ooh. I thought that was going to be smoked salmon, but yeah, I can't see are, anything. So, girl, I am not that fancy smoked salmon. Where am I ordering? <laughs> I mean, you just I buy packs of smoked salmon at the grocery store and mm-hmm. put it on the bagel. <laughs> well, so I'm not on like the make- bagel. What? <laughs> On the bagel, oh wait, it is God. a thing. Are you serious? Oh, stop. It's bagels stop and locks, right? Uh-uh. Yes, yeah, you never. Has. You don't even know mm-hmm. that's a thing. What? No. It is, Mm-mm. dude. Bagels and locks is the is very popular. You keep yeah. that thing um, to yourself. It's fa- uh-huh. are you serious? It's fantastic. Put some caviar, maybe some chives. I've never had caviar. And when you come out next time, we'll have some caviar. Caviar and caviar. potato chips are good. Oh yeah, I think we talked about it. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm from Texas, born and raised. Okay, I'm white trash. Okay, yeah, but people in Texas, right. people in Texas, and even in Georgia, eat smoked salmon. Like that's not. I, we should go to New York though, and because my favorite bagels are R- Russ and Daughters in New York, and they have tons of different amazing homemade spreads, tons of caviar, all kinds of smoked mm-hmm. fish. Like, oh my god, it's so good. I would kill for a Russ and Daughters yeah. bagel right now. Pretzel I mean, bagel or salt bagel. Mm. I've never had an everything bagel. I don't, I don't like know why. everything uh, people are People are like all about the everything seasoning. I do I not know. like it. I, I don't like, like plain, plain bagels, like sourdough I don't, or plain. I don't like all those seasonings on mine. This one's I like, a cinnamon one. So I like a cinnamon or blueberry or, you know, some kind of normal ones, but everything seasoning is not it to me. Uh, they yeah. just threw everything that they had at it. Nope. I just yeah. want a nice sourdough bagel. That's what I want. Well, and for breakfast, I don't want all that garlic, especially like the garlic and onion powder. Oh, on. uh, oh. 
Yeah, no. Garlic, onion, no, what else? Yeah. I think uh-uh. caraway unless, can be in there sometimes. But unless you have like some eggs on there, then it might be okay. Mm-mm. Like a bagel, an egg. Bagel okay. Sandwich. Not All like right, that. We could do eggs. But... Yeah, we could we do, can some do eggs, eggs on that. there. Mm-hmm. All right. So our yeah. question of the week comes from a fan on YouTube, Patrick. So thank you. He wants to know, do we get mobbed in public? And do you take pictures with fans? <laughs> or do you keep looking over your shoulder like, who are those crazy people that are following me? Are they looking at me? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we they must just be talking before. about your your page. I yeah. don't know. I don't think anybody. Although I did have that recent person on one of my pages. Oh, at a restaurant. Saw me in real life and was like, "Were you in this area?" And I was just like, kept trying to play it off. But they like these people never. I've had a handful of people recognize me and say it, and they never come up and talk to you because I think they either don't believe that it's you, or they're not sure, or they're like. Nervous they're intimidated that's why they reason, don't i guess yeah because i've almost never had anyone come up to me but i people will take pictures of me and send them to me <laughs> i've like, never had that happen before. that's but weird they'll be like weird. hey i saw you so and so like the funniest one though somebody saw me at petco park um and i was like sitting in like the right field home run seats um and i was eating i was stuffing my face with nachos um normally when i go there i'd sit in like a club level where it's sort of like secluded more which i like because i don't I don't know. I don't like people looking at me. I don't want people talking to me, whatever. Um, but I, they, so they basically sent me a picture of me eating nachos and I thought that was hilarious. Um, <laughs> but almost no one ever talks to me. I've had a few people and nobody ever asked for pictures, which I'm really, really awkward and shy. So I don't talk to strangers ever unless like it's about sports. If we strike up a conversation about sports and I don't know, you know who I am. I'm like much much better, much more comfortable. Cause I just am awkward. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just a regular mom. Really? Like I play a character on the internet. I'm not even sexy in real life. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I've had one person ask for a picture and that was years ago, like in the, the grocery, grocery store. store. Yeah. yeah. It was, he was a college kid and he, um, he was like, Oh, I just saw you on the news. Blah, blah, blah. Can I take a picture with you? And I was like, Okay, let me pull my mask down because it was during COVID still. Oh, yeah. uh, and I'm like, how do you even recognize me? I'm like, it's COVID. I'm like, everyone's right. wearing a mask. Um, and then if people, so- only time ever, anyone's ever come up to me is in the grocery store. I don't know. Like at, at the grocery store. And That's I'll be like. place to meet moms. Right? Well, your most yeah. iconic photos uh, have been <laughs> the ones like from the beginning where you're just like normal mom in the grocery store. That's true. That's you true. know what I mean? So it'll be That's like, true. oh, wow, I saw her in the grocery store. Holy it's crap. It's the ultimate dream yeah. to see. Like some of the most viral ubiquitous <laughs> pictures of you yes. were those grocery store ones. Well, and it's embarrassing, right? I'm, I, I'm always embarrassed where I'm like, oh my God, like, how do you even recognize me? I'm in the grocery store. Right. I'm like, not even like, I'm in you know, either jeans and a flannel or maybe leggings and a sweatshirt. Um, yeah. So that's kind of embarrassing. It's, it's always like, so <laughs> I'm like, Oh geez, here we go. <laughs> uh, I think people are a little nervous to be like, Hey, I follow you. I mean, that's not usually not that. I don't know. I think they just are... don't kind of don't know what to say. I had one of the funny one. We were at the Georgia's uh, national champion, the second national championship. So the one last year, that was at SoFi and I was walking back to the bathroom from the bathroom and I crossed the path with this guy. And I didn't think, I mean, I don't ever think anybody's going to recognize me. I don't know why, but I had on like a beanie cause it was freezing and raining. And this guy is walking towards me. He, st- he stops me. He's like, wait, you're, are you, are you? And I just kind of like looked blank. I was like, who do you think? And then I walked off because I'm like, I'm not going to say it. If you say it, I'll say yes, but I'm not going to offer this information. Okay. I'm just going to walk away because you, you know, because it's embarrassing. Yeah, right. I've had, I've had people- and I'm with my kids almost all the time at yes. sporting events. Sports are the only thing I go to, which is why I'm talking yeah. about that. But I'm almost always with my kids too. So, but thankfully, people who are like Respect respectful, that. yeah, not mm-hmm. weird. I mean, my kids know, but still, it's like if strange dudes were coming up to me all the time, I wouldn't want to go places with my kids, you know? Yeah. No, I had a couple of people at Disneyland. Um, year really? A little, but they, so I found out because they were writing on the back, like writing, like damn me, like, Oh, I just saw you at Disneyland. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I was, you were in front of me in line and I right. didn't want to say kind of anything. Thing I get. And yeah. Or this one guy was like, Hey, I saw you and I wanted my wife to meet you. She really wants to meet you. And then, 
I went to go grab her and then I turned around and you were gone. And, oh. but the people that saw me that were like, Hey, I saw that you're with your family. And like, that's cool. Right. Like, Oh I'm yeah. Like, oh, that's nice that you didn't like embarrass right. me in front of my family. <laughs> well, I had a guy at the at a Padres game once. We were in line. We were going to like a movie night on the field, and I was talking with his other family. It was like a dad, a mom, and their three kids. We we're just chatting about the Padres. Well, then later on, he had sent me a DM like, "Oh, I totally recognize you. I didn't say anything since you were with your family." I'm like, "I believe you didn't say anything because you were with." your family sir you were with your <laughs> wife and a hundred percent i mean i was good natured about it i was That's laughing and he's kind of like he just laughed about it because like yeah right you're like hey i saw you on the internet no really uh-uh. <laughs> that's hysterical that is funny. <laughs> all right so let's go to our rational mom's topic which has to deal with hey you like my glasses super cool oh okay so gosh. i did not watch the eclipse yesterday no. so is i didn't even know when it was movie? Oh, I, wasn't I went to go attention. take a shower. I was like, oh, starting. Okay, I need to get cleaned up. I didn't what? even look. I only looked up to make sure it wasn't during a time like that my kids would be riding their bikes home from school because I'm like, I don't want those dummies looking up at the sun. And it was only that it was it, in the afternoon on the East Coast is when. Yeah, it so it was like mid morning. But I was in the hospital yesterday, right? And this is like where the irrationalness comes from. I'm in the hospital, like my mom's getting prepped for surgery and the nurses come in like, hey, has some glasses do you want to go like check it out and i'm like my mom's going in for no. surgery i'm like no i want to sit with right. my mother i don't want to who cares about the solar eclipse i mean and then i don't know it was just like everyone like i got asked like five different times from five different nurses like oh hey you want to go check it out and i'm like what, what you do you guys even work i'm like what 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 the heck i'm like this is like a pre really off like so anyways i don't know i just thought it was a little bit like irrational like and then it was all over the news like everywhere for days right and people were having parties like in texas i know like did you hear hear what you want to hear the craziest thing when i was at this conference this last week Uh i one night i was at the bar by myself because i was like ah, i'm gonna go down i'm gonna go sit at the bar and have a couple glasses of champagne i was talking to this couple they were getting ready to go on a cruise to watch the solar eclipse it was a cruise in mexico (laughs) i was like what what I'm like, I get wanting That's to go funny. on a cruise, but I'm like, I don't. Oh, Going what? on a cruise sounds terrible. Though. Well, yeah, I don't <laughs> like cruises either. But. I'm not saying that I don't think the eclipse is cool. It's just like people made such a big deal about it and everybody had some crazy idea. I'm all about some out there ideas to, like that, I believe. But some of these were just a little too much for me. And I'm like, okay, this is. This well, is I mean, it was it like comes, Y2K all over again. It okay? comes around Y2K like every five or six 40. years anyway, or seven, whatever. I mean, I'm not like, a total one. Well, no, but I took my kids to see one like, I don't know, back in 2018, whatever, the last time it came around. Mm-hmm. And we pulled them out of school. And then they remember another time that there was one at school yeah. when they went out. So I'm like, dude, is this like, okay, really? It's I think fine. the next you, one is 2044 or something like that. Well, for the total. you know, maybe okay. I'll watch it then, but, but probably not. Maybe I'll then. watch it on TV. Well, <laughs> so a lot better. Uh, Charles Barkley was talking about it on the NCAA men's broadcast last night. And he was like, I mean, why, why why am I just going to like wait around to go out in the dark? Like what? He was like totally ragging on it. And uh, there was a tweet. Hold on. I would have find it. Um, Rex Chapman. I'm sure y'all may not know who he is, but he's a former NBA player. Um, He says, watching this eclipse stuff on TV and cannot get over how excited people are about seeing an eclipse of the sun. What? Why? People are losing their minds, cheering for the moon. Seems weird. And then he said some cheering people are crying. <laughs> and then the best was they're cheering for the moon like it just made a game winner. Go moon. Woo. And I was like, right? That's where we're literally cheering for something that's just happening in the in nature. What? So weird. It is weird. But maybe yeah. we should go on to the next cheering thing, which is sports, right? Okay. Yeah. There's a so, lot of sports ball stuff going on right now. There is. That, no, the draft's I'm coming up in a few weeks. Cool. The Masters is this weekend. Yay, Annabelle. Yay. Yay. No, I'm going to be like you are with basketball. <laughs> like, That's stupid. I don't want to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to watch that. That's stupid. Well, did you know that Tiger Woods is trying to come and No, a, because come why? In the I don't give the slightest, you know what, about Tiger Woods in any way. Well, I thought it was interesting no, no, because no. he's given up sex so he can focus on the Masters. You mean having <laughs> affairs or like what? Like not well, not I going thought, through that though is like supposed to enhance your focus. So I could Not understand. having sex? 
It's Did y'all not see the good. Seinfeld episode not where, it affects men and wi- where it affects men and women differently? It makes the man smarter and makes the woman totally dumb to have no sex. <laughs> <When> Ela- <laughs> Elaine's standing there watch- at like the tire shop watching the Michelin tires spin like, <laughs> and George becomes like a nuclear physicist or something with <laughs> no sex. He's like so smart. And then Kramer was like, they saw that naked woman in the window. Is that the episode that you're talking about? Uh-huh, and then and Kramer's he, like, done immediately. immediately. Went. He was like, I'm out. <laughs> Bucks. Yeah, it was like called the contest or something, I think was the was Oh, okay. Well, you know, I don't know. I I really used to enjoy watching Tiger play like back in the day, but I mean I don't think he's gonna like really do anything. He looks bloated like he's done what? a lot of cocaine he's or something. Incredibly talented. You guys he are is. crazy. Well, he he is, so I didn't talented. say he wasn't talented. No, I just I said I don't I mean, I think that he's still gonna blow people out of the water. I, uh, we'll see. I mean, it all depends. He's had a lot of injuries he's had to come back from, right? And he keeps yeah. on getting hurt when he's playing. But his son's doing amazing. Isn't he like, old as Oh, no, he's, he's our age. But for a are you going to say old? I mean, we're not yeah, old. People, people for a professional play, athlete, yes, that is old. Not, I mean, but golfers can be playing for years, I right? mean, I yeah, mean, it's golf. I guess. But, hey, I'm you know. Um, yeah, I guess when you play a really boring sport where you don't have to exert yourself much, hey, you can play for a longer time. It's, you know, it is a I mean, real sport. It is. I, didn't say I, it was I do consider sport. it a sport. I said a boring sport. It's like they're running. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. We'll move on to basketball. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't normally be this way, but that's how you were about the basketball. So I'm just giving you a little taste of your own medicine. It's okay. No, but you were this way a couple weeks ago when I talked about the Masters coming up. I just like, said it's bo- <laughs> I think it's boring to watch on television. Absolutely. I would love to go in person and watch it. Why don't you go? Get on the list or we something. We can wear cute little yeah. golf outfits. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Uh, golf club. You have to walk around a lot. And you have to yeah. go to Georgia in the summer. I bet I the snacks hot. there. I bet the, the, summer, the snack spring, stand right? is legit Whatever. over there. I bet you the drink stand's legit. Get myself a well, mint we both or over. whatever they drink down south, you know? It's like, and, it's you know. super expensive, too. It's <laughs> like Shuba. tens of thousands of dollars, I think, <laughs> to get the tickets plus all the stuff you have to buy. It's really expensive. YouTube. Come on, man. Send us to the uh, Masters. Oh. <laughs> You, you can wear that velvet green jacket, <laughs> that velvet green jacket that you have. You can. I'm going to work. That's going to be my next thing I'm going to work on. How do we get to like, no, you know, the no. open U.S. Open. Oh, U.S. Open would be fun too. Out Is over that here. Tennis? Italy. Golf. I'm talking about There golf. is a U.S. <laughs> open for tennis for sure. 100%. There's, there's, there's definitely there's one, one for tennis, tennis, Which yeah. I've watched before. So that's why that's the only one I know. I don't know what the names of the golf events are. Yeah. Other okay. than the Masters. Let's go on to ba- let's go on to the women's basketball and how we had what you said eighteen million people tuned in right for the NCAA 18. women's seven million is what the last numbers I saw were. Okay, so I'm gonna let you uh, let's go talk about it. Take it away. Take it away. Well, you know. I mean, I don't know, but we, none of us have really liked watching basketball on television, me included, even though I played basketball. But I did watch the women's like in the sweet 16 on and I watched we watched the men's I didn't watch any of the men's though until last night we watched the men's championship which was a great game until you know about halfway through when uh, UConn showed that they are just by far the best team um in men's basketball but I guess I don't know where to start with the women's basketball um it was super exciting I think South Carolina is definitely the better team um because you know Caitlin Clark is amazing, but Iowa doesn't ha- isn't a team of superstars. It's a team of Caitlin Clark and some other girls that are pretty good. Whereas South Carolina's team is superstars, and I mean they had two freshmen that balled out. Their bench is deep. Like you had South Carolina. I mean, and plus they have like a six seven uh, woman from Brazil who's just really good. I think her name is Cordoza or Cordova, um, but she's like really tall and she had really long. I think she had like red. Oh yeah, I saw a picture of her. Her braids, Mm -hmm. yeah. So she's very noticeable, and she's fantastic. Um, And I just, I have been so happy. You know, I played women's sports. Obviously, I have a daughter who's an athlete. It's been so exciting to see people care about women's sports. I mean, I know that everybody's like, "Oh, we hate women's sports. We don't want to watch women WNBA, whatever." But what I hope is that because of how exciting that this generation of college players has been and what they've done is they'll make the WNBA fun and exciting. Like what you need is what some of these girls have done, like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese 
um, and Haley Van Lith, Paige Beckers, all these, uh, oh, Flau J. Johnson. Do you guys know who she is? She plays for LA. She's also like, I mean, LSU, she's also a rapper and she's like really talented and beautiful. I mean, there's so many great women that have like real personalities. They're like flamboyant. They have rivalries. They smack talk that it makes it exciting and fun. And a lot of people are very offended that women wanted to smack talk, first of all. Um, oh, I think that should go on if you're playing sports. I absolutely. Mean, you have and to. I mean, that's I, part of the game. Yes. And there was a lot of controversy last year um, about some smack talk between Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, which was but funny because- But they're friends though, right? I mean, they I are. These about girls that, are all friends. Yes. They're all so excited mm-hmm. to be elevating women's basketball. None of them are bothered by any of the smack talk or any of the, the whatever taunting type behaviors they've done to each other. But, you know, the rest of the internet explodes about things. It's the um, media making it seem one way or the other. I, and people just take that and run it with is, it. It is. And there's a lot of the it. criticism was very misogynistic. And there was a lot of racist stuff. I mean, like Angel Reese was just drugged through the mud. Now, you don't have to like her personality. That is okay. But, like, you don't have to like any of these people. You, She does play the role of villain well as a player. As a person in real life, no. She's, like, super nice. Like, all the, her tweets about the games are all, like, pumped up and kind of smack talking. But the rest of it is like, oh, hey, guys, hope you have a great day. Like, she's, like, super nice. And so, you know, she does play the role of villain. But she got a lot of really horrifying, you know, death threats. She's a thug because she was taunting Caitlin Clark. And it's like, but Caitlin Clark did all the same things. And she was fine with it. Like, no one was offended. None of the girls were, right? That tells you that there's nothing wrong. It's just people overreacting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one of the the internet in general, right? Like it is overreact. And, but I mean, I do agree with you because I think it is important to see, um, or actually it is exciting to see that women's sports is actually gaining momentum and it's like, and it's actually a thing and people are following it and we're getting the views and it's getting, it's getting the, I mean, I mean, because if you get those views, you can then get more money. Exactly, <laughs> that's and that's the way part, it's gonna go, and right? that's been a right. That's been a big thing. Is like not enough people watch it. It sucks that the WNBA players don't get paid that much, but not enough people watch it, so there's no revenue. Um, and so it, you know, be and there's a lot of men, male basketball players, superstars who've retired that are super into promoting and, and lifting up women's sports, which I think is helpful because you need men to care too, right? It can't just be women, and um a lot of people have compared like this era of girls to like the Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, those people with these personalities that are making it exciting. And so that's what people want to see. Like you can criticize them for talking smack and be like, Oh, she's not classy or whatever, but who cares, man, those games and those games were good. Like they're good basketball games. I want to see girls being like fiery and exciting. You know what I mean? And then they can be buddies after, you know I mean? They all play on like, they've played on like club teams, Olympic teams, all this stuff together for years. So it's like, these when girls, it, these beats are be manufactured. Upset, you're gonna be upset for me saying this, but you you do know that like Brittany Mahomes, like her and um, she's actually put a lot of money into a stadium back in Kansas City to actually promote women's soccer, right? So they have a huge women's soccer stadium that's just for women, and they've actually sold out. And she's huge on promoting women sports. Well. <laughs> I think that I think what they've done for that team is amazing. She's done very little. If you look at what's actually happened, it's mostly the actual founders and people who are super involved. She's not very involved. She posts on social media a little. She's a partial. uh, Yeah, she puts some money in it, but giving her she giving her a lot of credit, acting like she spearheaded this whole thing, which a lot of people. Well, maybe not. But the thing is, is that it you have to have somebody out there who is actually the face of it that will actually get the momentum and get the public interested. Right. Right. And, and she has the, she has the viewership to do it. So if well, you're Patrick a radio owner, is the one, Patrick is well, the one that it still doesn't matter. It's still, she's, she's out there and she's, still no, I'm saying it. Patrick's name and face is the one that's really she's making a difference. Snack. You know what I mean? Pat- <laughs> Patrick guys, doing it is. You guys go back and forth. I'm just yeah. going to eat. <laughs> Like, well, yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, it is his money at the end of the day, right? right? <laughs> when well, him being involved helps a lot is all I'm saying. But yes, I do believe that it, that's amazing that women women should have these opportunities. And think about soccer. I mean, soccer is, isn't it the most popular sport in the world for people to watch? Football. So, yeah. So in America, Football. we should definitely be growing it and supporting it. And those games are exciting. I mean, mm-hmm. you know. Well, it, the it, fact that women can actually, because our women's female soccer team is actually really good, right? That goes to the Olympics. So, I mean, it's good. It's good to see those type of um, females out there. You know, they do have women's uh, flag football that we could play. 
That'd be fun. I that. love. Be a, yeah. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. what about the powder puff? So much fun. Yeah. <laughs> what about the powder puff football? That's where there's like actual tackle and stuff, isn't it? Or where it's like I, I can't tackle. lingerie I football or something. I'm I too lag. Football would be fine. I'm too old for it to be tackled. I get. A, I got. How throw, am I the I, only one that would be okay with tackling? Dude, you I threw out my back on, on a on a roller coaster. <laughs> I can't get tackled i got all the old people i got the early olds i can't i would love to have played football i mean i love football but i think it would ruin me i would be like just broken but i would totally do flag football uh, yeah flag football i don't want i tris i do not want to get beat up okay I, like, I would, i'm with annabelle i don't want to be the, i don't want to be hot emts up. carry you off the field and i don't want to hear about well, your sob story okay? they still could They'll do that with flag football better. too i could like no. twist my ankle or something <laughs> Yeah, I'll like dislocate my finger or something. I'm not going to risk, you know, my degenerative disc disease getting worse to, you know, just to meet a hot EMT. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Can we handpick them and come out there and then the refs too? <laughs> yeah, we should just start, a, we should start a girls, uh, a girls team. Or a women's, not girls, but a women's yes. team. A women's milk mm. estates team. That would be good. Moms. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and because I also don't want my hair pulled. Uh, well, you got to put your hair up. Come on. <laughs> no, but if you did tackle, like. Yeah, you like, put your hair in a bun. You, you can't be. Who's just pulling like you, just hair? Like you, just like if you're getting God. a fight. Girls pull hair. They do. I, Girls are mean. That should, that and they should scratch be you. And then, yeah. I'm I saying all this stuff. I've never been in a fight before, so I, I don't know what happens. That's in. why you got to always have a ponytail holder on your wrist when you go out. In case you get in a fight, I you got to be able to have a holder for something else. <laughs> no, it's in case you get in a fight. That way you can pull your hair up. Oh, oh okay. I didn't know that until I started hanging out with Annabelle years ago. <laughs> Why do you have that? I mean, that's a real a real thing. That's not just something I made up. That's very common, and it's joked about on the internet a lot because mm -hmm. you you got if you know if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh you say, you pull your if you got big earrings in, you pull your earrings out, throw your hair up, and you're ready to go. So you have we clip ons is the is what she's saying. <laughs> Well, no, just I don't wear big earrings, but you do. You'd have to pop those out because if somebody will rip your earlobe out with those things. Uh, yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> yep. That's you know, I mean, yeah. I'm all about being like kind of a bougie, like tomboy in, in a in a bat, like in a bougie tomboy. <laughs> that can, I, yeah, that's Hunter a good tomboy. A bougie the, tomboy. Yeah, that, no, yeah. that's a that's. An I mean, I was like, I was a total tomboy growing up. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was, you know, had a truck and was deer hunting yeah. and wore flannels, didn't know how to curl my hair, didn't even know how to do my hair, uh, yeah. didn't know how to do makeup, any of that. And so I learned how to do makeup I don't like want last year. to be hurt. I don't want to like being hurt. <laughs> no. You uh, learned what? How to do makeup last year? Like last year maybe or something. Yeah. When we were filming that pilot, that was when they were like, yeah. But then even then they put on too much makeup and I'm like, I'm telling you, if you put too much on, it looks bad. And they put on it on and they were like, oh yeah, you're right. You need less makeup. <laughs> well, yeah. Cause they want to put like makeup, makeup on you. And I, because I usually the for the camera though, like, well, right. But you the know. problem is for me, like, I guess the way my face is like really angular and I have some masculine features in my face that if I have on a lot of makeup, I a hundred percent look like a man in makeup. I'm only laughing because our producer is like cracking up and I <laughs> I can see him. <laughs> well, it's true because I've had, that's one of the mean things people say to me on the internet all the time is we'll be like, that's a woman or like, that's a, definitely a man or you're a transvestite, whatever. And I'm not like offended. I mean, it's just how I look, but having on a lot of, that way. having on a lot of makeup really does do that. Especially if I have on like bright red lipstick and it just, it's, it's like, oh, that's totally a man. <laughs> I'm like, Man, I mean, a lot of makeup is not flattering on anybody, if I'm being honest. No, I don't uh -uh. care how pretty you are. The whole point well, of makeup is to look naturally. Well, and I don't understand beautiful. the way all this, this influence, influencer culture, how like they wear so much makeup and they do these get they're ready with me videos and they're the using a filter layer. while putting on, yes. yeah, they're putting on like, yes, layers of foundation stuff. I'm like, I still don't even wear foundation. Like I wear a, like a BB cream with, uh, sunblock in it like a yep. tinted moisturizer that's yeah. exactly what i wore too um mm -hmm. and from elastin and i'm like what are like just for like regular going out during the day like this isn't even like a makeup look to go somewhere why are we putting all this makeup and nobody needs it like they most of them don't need it and when they're putting on the makeup they're using a filter so i'm like well, that's the part that's funny 
Like why the filter gonna... defeats. <laughs> why even wear get... makeup if you're going to use a filter? Why go to all that trouble? That's uh, insane. Just use a good filter. Speaking of irrational, <laughs> like that's a that's yeah. um that's irrational. No, I'm with you. I hate that. I actually, I still have a bag of like all this makeup I bought for like when we were filming. Cause I'm like, they, <laughs> they're like, you have to like, well, ha-, they're like, yeah. number one, you're too tomboyish. Like right. you, you need a, you can't wear flannels. You can't wear jeans. You need to like have a certain look. And I'm like, Oh, good yeah. Lord. I'm like, but that's not me. That's not how I look. Right. And so then I had to go buy all this. Or I had to go get my makeup done one day. And it's like, right. it, I left there and I was like, I should send the picture to you guys. I was like, yeah. what the yeah, F no, is was... this? I'm like, this is awful. I'm like, it doesn't even look like me. It doesn't right. look like no. me. You made it's... me look like somebody else. And I'm like, right. that's not who I want to portray. I don't want to be right. this fake person. And when right. I see these real housewives that are like, when they get their makeup done, they're like, mm-hmm. oh, look at me natural. And then they look at me and I'm like, you look worse with your makeup on. Like right. 100% worse. And like the way that we sort of run our social media presence. I mean, I use something that's like a natural filter sometimes. It's not really, it just changes the light and it makes you look more flattering. Uh-huh. And I'm like, our brand is looking like regular people. So to me, if there's a ton of makeup, it's like, you don't even look like yourself at all. And it's not believable that you're just a real person doing this for fun. You look like mm-hmm. a professional, like, I don't know. You look like a bee. <laughs> professional clown clown that's a good one i was trying to think of what i mean okay right it's like we're not really like on television or like like models or something so why would we be wearing all that makeup there are there are women that do it beautifully i went to a restaurant and this i was so like i don't know if enthralled is the word but i was just like holy cow i had to tell her her makeup looked gorgeous because it was Mm -hmm. beautifully flawless and i think i had none on Right. The dimes, I was like, oh, God, it just looks great. And I never do my, like, I don't do my eyebrows, which right. maybe I, I don't know. The lady at Sephora made me feel like maybe I do. She's like, well, um, I mean, if you have time, somebody's here to do eyebrows. I'm like, I don't get my eyebrows done. <laughs> no, I do. I do put, I Thanks put, for suggesting. I put some stuff on mine that's like <laughs> mascara, but for eyebrows, because mine are almost non-existent. And so it looks weird. Yeah. But I don't. I just, I just pluck a little, the, the stray crazy ones. yeah when really extra not. ones you, grow where they shouldn't i pluck them yeah i think the thing i hate most in makeup <laughs> is this contouring that people oh do. my god yeah like when the nose looks like a deer's nose it's like so brown i'm like who ever thought does, that looked good and my, why are we, i why put are we a tiny that? so i do a tiny little bit here <laughs> and then i do a tiny little bit no, here a because, tiny bit of contour but normal, it's like you can't it's tell. like so light right and so yeah sometimes no, I, I, mean, I can tell but no i I, I get can what show you some examples, but I don't want to be mean to people on the internet. My favorite redhead on Instagram, she does that sometimes. I'm like, God, you can see yourself in the camera. You see that you right. have not why blended do you th- your. Well, why do you? Th- <laughs> why do they think that looks good to have like a super <laughs> brown nose? It's like it doesn't brown look. Nose. It's brown nose. Brown is nose is not. Yes, that is not a complimentary situation. No, it's it's really bizarre, and so many of these younger <laughs> women are doing. It and I'm like, what the hell are y'all doing? Why? Stop, stop mm. with the makeup. Stop with the makeup. It's too much. Stop. Like it shouldn't. You shouldn't put on seven layers of anything on your face. That's <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's not even your face at that point. To me, I'm like, if it takes longer than like two minutes to get ready in the morning, that's not worth it. I'm Agreed. I'm probably ten mm. minutes or so to do my makeup, which is pretty good considering what. So I spend more think. time on like putting the serum on than the moisturizing yeah. sunblock and yeah. then another than the tinted moisturizing sunblock. Right. I have two layers of sunblock on, then blush. <laughs> yeah. And then like whatever. Mine it's takes like two minutes. A tinted concealer underneath here with sunblock. <laughs> yeah. Mine takes two minutes max for yeah. my makeup. Yeah. I have more sunblock on than I do anything else. Yep. Mm-hmm. Getting old. Got those, not about, those round, round spots off. Not about skin cancer. <laughs> yep. All right. So I think that wraps up this week of our podcast. So did we talk we, about everything that we're I think we about? did. Can, oh, can we just say that skin cancer doesn't just come from being out in the sun? Let's just make oh, it sure that people understand that oh, skin cancer is heavily affected by what you're eating and the oils and stuff that clog your pores and do these yes but it also comes from sun exposure without (laughs) wearing sunblock because i mean my dad and my ex-husband are two huge you know surfers whatever outside all the time and it's a thing 
Oh yeah, my grandfather was like super Irish and had like sun sun cancer all over him. I was got sun cancer. I mean, that's not funny, but it wasn't melanoma. Sun cancer? Yeah, it wasn't melanoma. It was like the other type of like yeah skin cancer, which is like not as as deadly. But yeah, he constantly had to have like, and he had long sleeves on all the time. But he was constantly getting things like burned off or cut off. But yeah, um, I go in like once every other year to have everything checked out. But I've had an aunt that is not ever in the sun. She never was into sunbathing, and she ended up getting melanoma. And it was just a, it was just a fluke, right? You yeah. Just, oh yeah, for sure. That's a problem. Nobody yeah. knows exactly what causes anything. But yeah. Anyway. All right. So a few things. We have an upcoming live coming up on Sunday the twenty first at two p.m. Pacific and five p.m. Eastern time. So yes. we will be posting about that. Uh, we have another special recording. Oh, actually, yeah, we're going to do, um, but we'll have a special guest. But we're, that will be like on our regular time um, that we'll do that. So We have a special actually... guest coming up. And <laughs> yes, this topic and it... might be of interest to a lot of men on the internet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we will be teasing that more as it comes up. Um, but that's about it for this week. Um, you can listen Is that to also a pun? Apple? We'll be teasing. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> You can listen to us at Apple or Spotify or catch us at irrationalmoms.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. And also tell a friend. Yeah, and we'll be back with more snacks, although I did eat half the strawberries. This one. I'm starving. I haven't <laughs> eaten anything. I gotta, but I'm starving on purpose. I eat too much on vacation and drink all day every day. So.